Hello. As stated in the inline turbidimeter video presentation, the inline turbidimeter is required to meet the reclaimed water monitoring requirements. However, if your inline meter cannot be calibrated, then as stated in standard methods, it must be backed up by an in-lab meter. Also, some Azipti's permits before 2009 had turbidity for monitoring which could re require a lab meter. I am here today with Isaac Robert to have him demonstrate for us the in-lab turbidity meter. Isaac was the former in inorganic chemistry manager here at the State Public Health Laboratory for 23 years. In that role, he also ran turbidity, wet chemistry, and metals. Isaac is the current lab licensure manager for us here at the State Laboratory. Isaac? Thank you, Steve. The easiest uh, ADHS approved method uh, to do turbidity, uh, which is approved for compliance purposes, is standard method 2130B. This method is uh, very similar to EPA method 180.1, .1, except that standard method does not require a linear calibration range study initially and semi-annually. Also, the standard method 2130B does not require a second source calibration check every quarter. Both the standard method and the EPA method require that you maintain and calibrate the meter according to the manufacturer's documentation. This is the reason why you are required to have signed off that you have read the manufacturer's documentation for your training purposes. The standard method uh, 2130B requires that you calibrate the meter with at least one standard, daily and within the range of use. That means uh, if your permit has two NTU maximum for a 24 hour period, and a 5 NTU single reading, then that standard has to be within 1 and 5 NTU units. Over here at the State Laboratory, we are using the EPA method 180.1. Uh, we are using an Orion AQ4500 turbidity meter. Uh, there are different meters in the, in, out in the field. Uh, some meters, they just require one standard for calibration, some they require two. So each plant will follow whatever um, the manufacturer's recommendation standards are for calibration. We are using uh, primary standards and we are using polymer standards. Uh, most of the labs are using the polymer standards because they have a one year expiration date. Also, the formazine standards can be made also, but the disadvantage of formazine standards is they have to be made daily. So it takes a long time to make the standards and the standards have to be made daily also. These standards are primary standards and they are traceable to a reference standard which could be NIST. And because over here at the lab we are using EPA 180.1, we are required to use a second source calibration standard also. The purpose of this standard is to check the accuracy of our calibration. Our meter, we have, most of the meters they have a calibration and a measure mode also. To do our calibration, we hit the calibration mode. Let me turn on the power of our standard and then uh, we are using EPA 180.1 uh, method to calibrate the meter I hit the calibration mode the meter is asking me to insert the water or a blank I've already poured all the blanks and standards in the oil so that it doesn't take too long before you uh, put the wires in the meter, make sure there are no scratches 
smudges or fingerprints on the on the wires. If they are dirty, you can use a lint-free wipe to clean them up. Most of the wires, they can be aligned into the meter and then there's an alignment mark over here. Make sure that it is aligned with the meter. We insert the wire into the meter, put the cap on and hit yes. Usually it takes about 30 seconds uh, for the meter to read. If it's a low level standard or a blank, it takes a little bit longer uh, to take the measurement because the meter is trying to read multiple readings and then it takes an average of all those readings. After it's done reading our blank, I'm going to insert the one NTU standard. Like I said, uh, over here we're using four standards, one, 10, 100, and 1000 NTU. Uh, but we recommend that you, you use at least three standards uh, ranging from 1 to 100. The meter is run done uh, reading the blank. Now it's asking me to put the 1 NTU standard. Take the cap off and put the NTU, 1 NTU standard in the meter. Hit yes. And basically it's going to take the same amount of time, about 30 seconds. I'm getting ready to get the 10 NTU standard. The meter is done reading the, the one. Take this one out. And I'm going to insert the 10 NTU standard in there. And hit yes. I have all the lock numbers and the expiration dates of the standards on the wires so that there is no confusion which standard I'm using. Peter is asking me for the next standard, which is a 100 standard. Make sure the wire is aligned. And we're going to read the standard also. And our last standard is a 1000 NTU standard. And our meter is done reading the 100. Make sure the wires are aligned. Close the cap. And hit yes. This is our final standard for our calibration. And like I said, after the calibration, the method requires that we you read a mid-level standard and a calibration blank. The mid-level standard has to be within plus or minus 10% of the true value. Our meter is done doing the calibration and it's telling me that the calibration is done. Now, the method requires that we read the blank again, insert the blank, and we hit the major button. And after that, we're going to read a mid-level standard, which is required by the method. Uh, we are using a 10 NTU. So the plus or minus 10% will be anywhere from 9 NTU to 11. Our blank is reading 0 0.03 NTU, which is very good. That shows us there's no contamination in the plan. And then we read a mid-level standard, which is a 10 NTU. Hit yes. And it will give us a reading of our standard. Make sure that uh, both the blank and the standard readings are recorded in a log on the day of the calibration. Thank you. And uh, the reading for our 10th standard was 9.95, which is well within the range of plus or minus 10%. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac.